I've been working on some novelty radios, some things, you know, a space theme or whatever, 1950s themed. And these are capacitively tuned radios. And I've had, I had a rough time with this one. Uh, it only gets a couple channels and, you know, okay. So I thought, well, the coil's a little bit out of spec because it's, it's, it's very wide and it's not very tall. And yeah, it's, uh, it, maybe it's the coil. So I'm still actually working on that, but I didn't get very good results. And I'm also putting together another one. And here's the coil out of it. Now this coil, in theory, should be darn near perfect. It is roughly as long this way as it is big in diameter. So that's called a square coil. And the uh, Q of it's good. It's got a slightly separated antenna coil. Uh, the, yeah, everything's good on it. The Q is high, all that stuff. So it should be a very good coil. And when I put it in my new version of the uh, space themed radios, it didn't work very well. So yeah, I got two and a half stations, call it, but yeah, just not, not what I expected. So I was going over everything. Gosh, you know, I got the uh, same diode, same antenna, um, everything across the board. But when I put it on my workbench and tuned it up, it worked very well, as well as I expected, in fact. And I thought, so what is the difference? You know, same antenna, same diode, same, same everything across the board, except for one thing. And that is the type of capacitor that I am using. So this is an air type capacitor, and this is a film type capacitor. And if we look back here, this gang back here, is roughly the same capacitance as this side of this film capacitor. So I thought we would run a comparison using the meter and see if perhaps something like the dissipation factor was high on one of these. Uh, dissipation is how inefficient the thing is, how much power it burns up basically in, in just being itself. So uh, let's do that. Let's connect up this air type capacitor. Make sure you can see all that. Um, hook that there. Hook this here. So this is a maximum capacitance. It's 114 picofarads and the dissipation is zero. Wow, that's pretty good. It's really good. Let's go to the other extreme. And these are the plates all the way out. We get 10 picofarads and 0 0.008. Hmm. Okay, so not too terrible. Let's compare that to the equivalent side of this film capacitor. So that's this side. This is 114 to 120. And we'll go from here to here. Clip it on there. Okay, so this is the low end and it's 14 picofarads and 0 0.02. Wow, so what is that? Two, two and a half times more at the low end. And then let's go to the high end and stabilize 0 0.123 at, uh, yeah, at 124 picofarads, 125 picofarads. So this thing is like infinitely more dissipation at that level. Yeah, so this is why I have been having some problems with my novelty 1950 style radio is the dissipation on this, at the high end at least, is almost zero. And at this, it's, you know, point, what did it say, point one, two, three. So yeah, it's a huge difference. And it's why the radios that I build with these just, just don't have it. I mean, with this, I can get five stations with a typical coil. And with this, I get two, maybe two and a half, if you want to call it that. So yeah, uh, not sure any good way around this. I mean, other than just using air, air type uh, variable capacitors, but they're getting harder to find and they're more expensive. Uh, but these just don't seem to work well enough to do the job. So anyway, I'll keep struggling by. I'm going to finish up my projects that require these. And I'll put them out there if you're interested. But again, it's more of a novelty radio. You're only going to get two, two and a half stations, uh, you know, or whatever your equivalent in your area is. 
Okay, well that was it for today. Hope you found this useful and interesting in your DIY crystal radio projects.